Today we're speaking about PSA, which stands for prostate specific antigen. This is a blood marker that we use in men to monitor prostate disease and suspicion of prostate disease and not specifically prostate cancer. <clears throat> PSA has been in use since 1989. And although there's been a lot of controversy in the lay press about the use of PSA as a diagnostic marker for prostate cancer, it is actually a very sensitive marker if it is used uh, appropriately and properly and the people who use it understand that it is not there to diagnose prostate cancer but to raise suspicion of uh, possible prostate uh, cancer. It is also elevated in the prostate in, during episodes of prostate infection, but importantly, once these infections are treated, the PSA should return to normal values, which is not always the case and seldom the case when there is an underlying prostate cancer. The most common condition that men get as they age, and especially after the age of 45, is so-called aging or benign prostatic enlargement, which can cause the PSA to raise at a slower tempo uh, than when there is prostate cancer underlying or a, a prostate infection. When we get elevated PSAs, uh, this, as I say, raises suspicion and the, the patients are then encouraged to see either their family physician or a urologist who would then distinguish between the various causes of the elevation of, of PSA and do the appropriate tests to possibly diagnose the underlying condition. Uh, there are various ways in which PSA can be used and, then, and there are various forms of PSA circulating in the bloodstream. Some of the PSA is bound to proteins, uh, some uh, PSA is free circulating in the blood and we often use the ratio of the various forms of PSA to make it more sensitive to the uh, as a diagnostic tool or to uh, initiate further uh, further testing in patients who've had prostate cancer PSA uh, should uh, drop to zero uh, and it is then a very useful tool to monitor patients even long distance uh, by just doing a blood test Good. in patients who have not been diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, PSA, uh, as, as mentioned, can be a little bit uh, more of a grey area and has to be used in conjunction with clinical examinations and especially digital rectal examinations. Too often we see patients who have prostate cancer with elevated PSAs and they have been told that they have infection or aging enlargement of the prostate and the cancers are missed because they are not, uh, the PSA is not used in conjunction with the clinical examination. So if a PSA is used alone without a digital rectal examination, roughly 20 to 22% of prostate cancers will be missed. Uh, and by the same token, if only the clinical examination is, is done, up to 80% of prostate cancers can be missed. So the message really is that in men over the age of 45, where there is no family history of prostate cancer, and in men over the age of 40, where there is a history of prostate cancer, or in black males who have a higher incidence of prostate cancer, and the, these tests should be done in conjunction, uh, both the clinical test and PSA, uh, on an annual basis. And depending then on what the levels of PSA are, what the annual elevation in PSA is, which we refer to as the velocity of PSA increase, 
then the appropriate investigations can be tailored uh, accordingly. So in summary, PSA is an incredibly useful, important uh, blood marker which has changed the management of prostate cancer <clears throat> over the last 25 years. Uh, this, uh, however, has to be used appropriately and in conjunction with clinical examinations. PSA is not a diagnostic marker for prostate cancer as there are other conditions in the prostate that do cause PSA elevation as mentioned previously, but uh, if used appropriately uh, can direct the specific examinations as mentioned.